This past February 25, Adobe Photoshop for the iPhone was released. In this video, we're going to be running through the pros and cons and whether you should be using it. Before I run through the list, it is useful to note that when it comes to compositing photo editors on the iPhone, Adobe really has no competition. The only viable competitor is another Adobe product, Photoshop Express. So when I compare Adobe Photoshop and talk about its pros and cons, it's mostly relative to Photoshop Express. So let's run through the pros and cons. The first pro is the powerful AI selection tools of Photoshop for the iPhone. Photoshop for the iPhone stands out because its AI selection tools perform just as well as the desktop. To demonstrate, let's replace the background of this image. As you can see, Photoshop for the iPhone comes with a unique tap select feature where you can make selections simply by tapping on auto-detected objects. This workflow is perfect for the tiny iPhone screen. As you can see here, Photoshop has already detected the person and the sky. You can also tap select the subject and the background. I'll select the subject. I'll mask out the background. I'll add in a new background from iCloud Drive, which Photoshop supports. As you can see, it works great. Another powerful selection tool built into Photoshop for the iPhone is object selection. To demonstrate, let's replace the scenery showing through the hole in this rock. I'll use object select to select the hole. There, that's a good selection. However, the person is incorrectly included. No problem, let's use object select to remove him. I'll switch the selection mode to subtract. I'll select the person. And there you go, a perfectly selected hole with not much effort. I'll invert the selection. I'll mask out the hole. I'll add in the new image. So with just a few clicks, the composite is done. Not bad for an iPhone app. Finally, when it comes to complex edge selections, such as those in hair or fur, Photoshop does not disappoint and works just as well as the desktop app, outputting a well-fitting selection with just one click. And it works without an internet connection. The second pro is more accurate generative fill. While having generative fill on an iPhone is not new, Photoshop Express has had this for a few months. Photoshop for the iPhone takes it to the next level by allowing its powerful selection tools to work with generative fill. To demonstrate the benefit, let's first use Photoshop on the iPhone to replace the sky. I'll tap select to make a precise selection of the sky. As you can see, this allows for the generative content to be added perfectly to just the sky without affecting any adjacent areas making for a more sophisticated edit. As a reminder, its competitor Photoshop Express only allows for a brush with no edge detection, which can be extremely error prone. The third pro is interoperability with other Photoshop apps. One great feature is any edits performed with Photoshop for the iPhone is automatically synced in the cloud. This allows for edits to be seamlessly continued with other Photoshop apps, whether it be Photoshop for the iPad or the web. You can see the benefit in this example where I'm able to continue editing the file on Photoshop for the iPad, taking advantage of its more sophisticated tools to correct problems after starting editing with Photoshop for the iPhone. The fourth pro is better price and value. In conjunction with the release of Photoshop for the iPhone, Adobe also released a new mobile and web plan which you can get by purchasing the premium service in Photoshop for the iPhone. The new mobile plan is both priced lower at $8 a month and includes more apps, Photoshop for the iPad and Photoshop for the web. So why is Adobe doing this? I would guess it's a response to fierce competition coming from Affinity Photo, which just updated its app with AI selection tools, all for free. In any case, this is great news for customers 
which now have the option to access Adobe's more powerful tools at a lower price point in more devices. As a reminder, Photoshop for the iPad alone used to cost $10 a month. So those were the pros of Photoshop for the iPhone. Next, let's move on to the cons. While it is hard to criticize Photoshop for the iPhone, given that it has no competition, I do want to point out a few cons that limits its capabilities compared to its iPad and web siblings. The first con is it lacks the refined edge tools. When selecting complicated edges, like those in hair or fur, Photoshop will oftentimes fail to produce a well-fitting selection, as you can see in this example. The main remedy for this is a tool called Refine Edge. Unfortunately though, Photoshop for the iPhone doesn't have this tool and it is the only Photoshop app to lack this feature. So all you can do is wait till you have access to the iPad or web app to be able to use Refine Edge. The second con is the lack of ability to edit masks. For whatever reason, Photoshop for the iPhone does not have the ability to view a mask or brush on a mask to fix imperfections as I'm doing here in Photoshop for the iPad. Again, this limitation is one which only exists in Photoshop for the iPhone, not in the iPad or web app. So there you have it, the pros and cons of Photoshop for the iPhone. Do I recommend it? Definitely yes. Despite having no competition on the iPhone, Adobe has done a lot of great work to make sure that Photoshop for the iPhone does not disappoint. It's one tap selections just work even for complex edges, such as those in hair or fur. Its generative AI is best in class and works just as well as the desktops. You can also seamlessly edit across devices without missing a beat. And best of all, its premium plan now comes at a lower price with more apps included. And that's great news for customers. So I hope you found this video helpful. Let me know what you think of Photoshop for the iPhone. Are you going to use it? Write it down in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. And if you like this content, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share to help keep the videos coming. Until the next video, I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye for now.